Hey, I'm Brian Van, SportBikeTrackGear.com, and today we're gonna install Gila bars, right? They're, they're riser clip-ons on our 2018 STG Suzuki GSXR 1000R project bike. A little bittersweet here. This is my last install video on this bike. We actually have this bad boy listed for sale right now. I just put it up yesterday. If you're looking for a kick-ass Jixxer, we've got one here for you. Gila bars. This is a, a, a US company based in Maine. All their engineering and manufacturing design work is all done right here in the US. They've been around for 30 years. They take a lot of pride in what they do. What is it that they do? Because it's way more than what we're showing you here right now, right, with the Suzuki and these clip-on handlebars. From touring bikes to sport bikes, they are re-engineering hand control positions to make the bike more comfortable for you. Track days, right? I've been doing that for a long time. You go there and you see this real wide range of ages that are participating all the way from, depending on the insurance that the track they might have, you, know, you might see 12 year olds out there learning how to ride on the track, preparing to race. You've got your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, right? Real diverse group. What I can tell you for sure, as you get a little bit older, those real racy positions a lot of these bikes come from in the factory in, or the modifications that we might make to it by putting race clip-ons that put the bars a little further out and a little lower even than stock, you know, they're not gonna be comfortable for everyone. So with this example on our Suzuki, what Gila Bars has done here is they have designed a pair of clip-ons and they're installed on the bike right now. We'll show you the install after all this. They're one and five eight inches taller. They're rearward one inch to shorten that reach up and they're one and a half inches wider overall gives you a little bit more leverage they design these so that you can install it using all of the stock controls and you're not going to run into any ergonomic jams see here let's see the grip of that michelin tire we're not banging into anything, right? It clears everything. Stock clutch cable, these are all the same parts. Even though not everything I have here is OEM, these are all the same parts that I had on with the driven racing race clip-ons, which were in a much more different ergonomic position. These are, are much higher and a little bit further back. And I gotta tell you, sit on the bike now, the reach is totally different and I can see where this would really appeal to a lot of people. This is one of the best and certainly the easiest to install option, right? Because there's no drama. You're not trying to put these riser clip-ons on and, and you're running out of cable, you're banging into bodywork. These are designed to work with the stuff that you have. High quality part for the switch pods, all the locator holes for the tabs are pre-drilled. For the throttle, if you're using the OEM throttle and the OEM on-off switch, all pre-drilled in the perfect position, right? you're able to reuse the OEM bar ends. We didn't on this particular install because I couldn't find them. We were able to use the driven bar ends with the Suzuki adapters, so they're in there, they're super solid, they look sweet. I'm really impressed. I'm impressed with the quality of the product. I'm impressed with the engineering that's went into it. And just sitting on the bike, I can see how there's a lot of people that are really gonna prefer that position. Let's talk instructions. I've been installing parts on bikes for a long time. I've, and I'm not a big instruction reader, I'll admit that, but I have a lot of experience. But what I wanna show you here is the care and effort they have put in to their instructions. It's even signed by the president of the company. You gotta love that. Tremendous effort put into this. They even break down how they recommend trailering the bike, okay? If you're gonna strap down the front end, 
I would say I agree with that completely. Instead of strapping down the bars, it's always better to go from the lower clamp if you have that ability. The best way ever to do it is with a pit bull trailer restraint. Of course, not everybody has those mounted in their trailers. The reason I wanted to take a minute and highlight this, when you get a company that's going to take this kind of time, effort, and care and invest that in their instructions, you're guaranteed to have a kick-ass product. You like what you see so far and you want to watch the install? That's coming up next. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's dive right into this install. Your bike might look a little bit different than mine. This bike is, you know, fully track prep. It's been that way for a long time now. You know, and this Gila bar clip-on set is something that riders are going to use both on the street and on the racetrack to help dial in the ergonomics. So just take what I said into account as we go through this install and understand some portions of your bike may look just a little bit different than ours. What I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start off by breaking loose our top clamp nut. I'm using a 36 millimeter socket on a half inch ratchet. The instructions that uh, come from Hilo Bars actually tell you to use a 36 mil socket. So, you know, they went through their paces and did this install themselves. The instructions, I thought, were very well written. Probably some of the best that I've ever seen. Okay, so to break down, you can see I've got a Brembo Master on this and a quick turn throttle and a Motion Pro stop start switch. So this just looks a little bit different, odds are, than you know, probably what you guys have. So just be aware of that as we go through this process. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna loosen up the clip-on tube. and then we'll loosen up the controls and slide everything. Slide everything off as I pull the bar out. It's Motion Pro Quick Turn Throttle. We've used these on all their bikes. This has been a great part. The Brembo Master is always a phenomenal addition. So getting ready to sell this bike. This is the last video that uh, we'll ever do on this Suzuki. This thing's up for sale right now. Brembo Master removal. Gila Bars is a brand that we've been selling for a number of years now. Uh, it's a brand that we do really well with because the bottom line is their stuff works. They spend a lot of time engineering it to make sure that it makes the bike more comfortable for riders to enjoy, right? I mean, you get some of these sport bikes, the ergonomics are pretty gnarly and they're just not right for everybody, you know? The clip-ons that we have on this bike, they're gonna lower the uh, bar position and bring it, I believe, a little further forward than OEM. So it kind of stretches you out a little bit and brings you down. It's not going to be right for everybody. The OEM bars also are not right for everybody. The Gila bars are wider than OEM and taller than the OEM with a similar, I believe the reach is similar. We'll talk about that a little bit more as we get into the, the spec sheet that comes with it. And we're going to do a comparison too when I get all these clip-ons off. We'll kind of hold them all side by side so you can visually see the difference between each one. I was saying earlier, this bike is actually up for sale now. I just got it listed uh, yesterday. I've had this last video, we just, it's been a busy summer. You know, we get racing and it can be hard to keep up sometimes. And we just haven't gotten to this, uh, this particular install, but we're here now, we're gonna get this rocked out. Because this really is, this is a, a, a unique product line that really serves what, what I believe is a purpose. You know, it's the ergonomics on these bikes, they're just simply not right for everyone. And this product line can make a huge difference 
and how much you enjoy your time on your bike. Uh, on this side, as I go through this, I'm going to actually, I think I'm going to pull this grip off just so we can kind of complete the install and you get a full look at it. Piece of safety wire down there. Grab the air hose. We are still running the OEM switch pod. Over here on the left side, because the Suzuki comes with all these rider aids and in order to scroll through that, you have to have this switch pot on there. So I actually drilled that clip-on tube to preserve that switch. In their instructions, which will show as we go through this video, they include torque specs, which is nice. Very detailed, good pictures. This stuff's made right here. It's made and engineered in Maine. 30 years of experience. And they're doing a lot more than just sport bikes. You know, you get some of your touring bikes, venture bikes. They're doing stuff to just get the ergonomics more dialed in. You know, especially if you're a track day rider, I know they've got kits for the R1s, R6s, the Gixxers that we sell quite a bit of. And, uh, you know, as you get a little bit older, having clip-ons that are lower and further forward, not necessarily going to be the best for you, right? Makes it even more uncomfortable, you know, so with this line, you've got the ability to... Uh, sort that out okay now we get our top clamp pinch bolts and this is going to allow us to remove the top clamp this bike has owens fork cartridges and fork extenders on it to help dial in the geometry on the suzuki your bike may or may not have those so it might look a little bit different Okay. Gently work the top clamp up. See me doing a little bum pressure. Fingers underneath the clamp. Not too difficult, and that's going to come right off. All right, now we'll go ahead and pull our clip-on cuffs. Had to go and get the right size. Allen, so four, these are driven. So this may not be the most scientific way to measure this or give you guys a look, but nevertheless, the one closest to me is going to be the Driven, which is kind of a standard race three-piece clip-on, right? You can see it is the lowest of the three, and in the middle, we have stock. You can see that it's shorter in length than the Driven clip-on. It's a little bit higher. The downward angle is pretty similar in the end, and they're gonna be just a little bit further back. Now, when you look at the helo bars, it's very clear. Of all, it's the highest. And one of the things that they do is they change the downward angle a bit. They raise it while changing that downward angle, gets the bars a little bit flatter, which makes it a lot more comfortable for many people who are looking to change the ergonomics to ride the bike. Just simply makes it easier to ride and it results in a bar that ultimately, because if you kind of get these lined up, a little bit longer than the OEM bar. 
All right, let's go ahead and let's get this bad boy put back together. Slide this through our clutch perch like so. Drop that over the fork tube. We'll go ahead and push it down a little bit and kind of get it out of the way. You'll notice, and this is something that a lot of people are really going to love, they have pre-drilled the holes for all of your switch pods. So if you're using the OEM throttle, the OEM switch pods, you're not going to have to worry about drilling any holes. They've done all of that for you. They're even designed to accept the factory bar ends. I took those off of this bike a long time ago. I don't have those anymore. We have some driven bar ends with the adapters that are going to thread right in there, which is super cool. Let's go ahead and get our switch pod slid over the bar. Find that locator. Raise that up a little bit. I'm going to get a stubby screwdriver and go ahead and tighten those two up. Had a lot of fun on the, this bike, just like all the other project bikes we built over the year. It's kind of bittersweet when you get to the end and you're doing the last project or you took the last ride on the bike and, you know, next step is moving on to somebody else. Still working on that R7. I've been riding that this summer. Gotten an opportunity to ride a little more than I have the last couple of years. And I tell you, I've enjoyed that one too. And with all the bikes I've built over the years, I've enjoyed them all. I don't, I don't know that there's any single one at this point that I've built and been like, oh, I just don't like you. Okay. So far, I have to confess, I'm pretty impressed with the quality of the product right out of the gate. The stuff just looks great. Okay. Just keep moving forward here. Down to our master cylinder. I do think Suzuki is something that we're going to be sticking with. I think my son Max is going to, I think the plan as of today is that he's going to be racing a Suzuki next season. So hope so. We'll see how that all lands. Might see another bike get built. Start stop switch Motion Pro. All this stuff is just going to be left loose here for a minute. Okay, and for the throttle, I'm going to have to go ahead and slide this apart. You know, the nice part about the three-piece race clip-ons that we had on the bike, the serviceability is a little bit easier because, you know, you have that clip-on tube is independent of the cuff, you know, so it makes certain things easier, like bar replacement. Even in this case, you can kind of leave a lot of the controls, you know, assembled while you're building things out. Not a huge deal.
just a little bit different because these are one piece, very similar to what we see from the OEM. It's been together for a hot minute. Okay. Slide that back over. These Motion Pro Quick Turn Race Throttles, these have been a great product. This is something that we've used on several bikes now. Just waiting for the one to come back in stock so I can throw it on my R7 that I've been riding. All right, go ahead and continue getting this throttle put back together. You kind of have to have the throttle assembled before you can tighten the brake or the <clears throat> with this setup that I have here, a race style setup, you have to have this part done first to establish the distance for the brake and the on off switch. If you're using the OEM controls, that stuff's already all drilled out on these Gila bars, so there's no reason to have to establish anything. You can just go ahead and put them in their spot. That locator tab is going to fall right into place in the hole that was previously drilled, and you're simply going to be good to go. Now we can go ahead and slide our top clamp back over. Sometimes you're going to have to put a little bit of, you know, because once you pull that clamp off, you lose that support up top and that steering stem and or lower triple can flex just a little bit. You saw I kind of had to just push forward just a hair to get it to clear. Totally normal. Tap on it lightly with your palm. Go ahead and drop your washer back in place. Your top nut. And now what we want to do here is we want to make sure that we have that top. I don't want to torque it right now, but I want to make sure that it's kind of seated. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure on it with that 36. And you can feel right there where it wants to stop. From here, we will then go ahead and torque the top bolts on both sides. Those are going to be torqued to 16 foot-pounds. Got a torque wrench all set up to do that. Come back over to the other side. I need to use an extension to slide in there and get that side done up. We got that one torqued up. Straighten our wheel. And now we can continue building out the controls. Okay, next up, let's get our torque wrench. We're set to 80 foot pounds. We're going to torque our top clamp nut using the 36 millimeter socket. Right there. 
Now we're ready to continue building out our controls. Just like we see with the stock clip-ons. You see this locator tab? There is a cutout on the bottom side of the top triple clamp that that lines up with to ensure that you have the clip-ons lined up in the right position. So you're gonna find that towards the back of the clamp. So what I like to do is we're gonna raise this up. I've kind of got my finger underneath it. I'm in the hole right now. And we can go ahead. These are gonna be torqued to 16 foot-pounds per the instructions. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of torque on it to hold it in place right now while I grab the torque wrench. That is still set to 16. That's the same number that we had on the top clamp pinch. Got a six mil internal hex fastener here. There is 16. So we've got that side torqued and ready. We'll come over to the other side, get that one positioned the same way. All right, same deal over here on the other side. Let's go ahead and raise that up. Make sure you have it in the spot. Putting a little upward pressure to hold it up against the bottom of the triple. A little bit of torque. I keep telling myself, self, we need to get a ratcheting torque wrench for our 3 8 All right, there is our 16. Go ahead and straighten the wheel out. And now we can begin to finish up the rest of the controls. This is a GP clutch perch from our friends at CRG. This is a pretty cool little part. That snugged up. Go ahead and get this. I'm just gonna slide this grip back over. See that fits real nice. Snug that up. We still have the clutch switch on this bike. Go ahead and get that plugged back in. We'll come over to the other side. And wrap this side up. This side's a little more going on over here with the throttle. One of the things you want to be really aware of is making sure the throttle is far enough into the clip-on that you're not gonna have any interaction with the bar end and the grip, right? The last thing you ever wanna do is have a throttle stick. That goes without saying that would create a pretty dangerous situation that nobody wants to be faced with. So we'll go ahead and make sure we've got that in there far enough before we tighten up our throttle assembly. All right, once we do that, we can go ahead and butt the start-stop switch up against the throttle housing. And then we can do the brake master. All right, come over and grab our brake master. What I'm looking at here is I'm just looking at the clearance for my Brembo 
brake reservoir, making sure that everything's going to be good to go there. That looks like it's going to be great. With your front brake master, what you want to do is you want to make sure that with the top clamp, the top bolt in the clamp, that's the one that you torque down all the way first. The bottom portion, there is always going to be a gap. That is where all the tension is applied and prevents the master cylinder from rotating on the clip-on. Always tighten this one all the way until it's completely seated. Leave the other one a little bit loose. And then go ahead and grab your, in this case, five mil Allen. Apply enough torque that it's not going to turn. See there, even, even the race components I put on here, the Brembo portion clears no problem. The Motion Pro throttle clears no problem. Last step here. Remember, these are designed to accept the OEM bar ends. The driven bar ends to fit into OEM Suzuki handlebars, you have to put these little adapters on. We sell them on the website if you're interested in the driven bar ends. If you're going to reuse your OEM bar ends with these Gila bars, you don't have to do anything but just thread them right in. But for our case, because I can't find the OEM ones, if you're worried about these coming loose, you could put a little bit of uh, thread lock in there. Totally up to you. This install is being done for the purpose of this video, right? And then I'm going to end up putting the other race clip-ons on because I think that's what the new owner of this amazing machine is ultimately going to want. So look at that. Look at that bar position. I mean, that is completely different. You know, I've ridden this bike quite a bit. Uh, that's it's a lot higher, you know, it's ergonomically, if you felt like you were really reaching, if you felt all scrunched up on this bike and too hunched over, that's going to make a huge difference. And the cool part is you can use these for the street. You can take these to the racetrack because there's plenty of people. I mean, you go to the track days, you see a real diverse group of people. You're going to see all the way from kids that are old enough to ride, you know, depending on the insurance of the different track organizations. Kids that are out there riding all the way up to, God, I, I'm not sure what the oldest that I've seen yet, but I've got some friends that are out there that are well into their 70s that are still out ripping these bikes around the racetrack. And the truth is, you get a little bit older, right? Those real uh, race-oriented ergo positions that are, are great when you're young, well, they're not so great when you're older, and it just it's more painful. It's less comfortable to ride, and it just takes a lot of the fun out of it. That is the whole point with the Gila Bar product, is they dial the ergonomics in to make the ride better. And they do it in such a way that with your OEM controls, these kits you're going to get from them, they're going to be complete and designed to work with the OEM pieces on the bike. If there's ever any variance from that, it's going to be called out in the product listing and or in their instructions so you know up front, hey, listen, this is a little bit more of a project than I anticipated. I need to get a, a, a this or a that to go along with it and complete the install. With the majority of bikes, you're not going to have to do anything different. Like we showed you with these clip-ons, you're able to take all the stock parts, the switch pods, the master cylinder, the bar ends, the throttle, everything. It's all pre-drilled, ready to rock and roll and just complete your install, right? End of the day, these were probably even easier to install than race clip-ons because with race clip-ons, if you're using some stock switch pods, you have to drill a couple of holes here and there, right? You have to make some more adjustments. You're changing the ergos a little bit. It's a great product, great people made right here in the United States of America and Maine, been around for 30 years. That's a long time. They take great pride in what they do and you can see that from as we showed you early in the video and I gave you a close look at their instructions, they didn't just spend a ton of time developing the part and manufacturing the part, they spent a ton of time putting good instructions together to make sure that when you receive it, you're gonna be able to get the same result that we got with our install. 
If you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section of this YouTube video. I answer all that stuff myself, and I'm always here to make sure you get the same result from your project we did ours.